Have you ever heard anyone say something like, oh, you don't know how lucky you are? Or, in my day, we had to walk 30 miles to school and back every day, and I never complained. You don't know you're born. Or, all these toys kids have today, all I had in my day was a pet brick, and I was grateful for it. Sometimes from some people, there's a feeling that life today is much easier than it was in the past, and maybe we're not as thankful for that as we should be. Personally, I'd argue that life's just different, that there have been some wonderful advances and there are also some new challenges and problems that we have to face. But either way, the sentiment behind those sayings is that we should be grateful, we should be thankful, we should appreciate the good things that we have, not take them for granted and know that not everyone has always had the good things that we do. Listen to Paul as he talks about the mercy that Jesus has shown him. Here is a trustworthy saying, Paul writes, that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. But for that very reason I was shown mercy, so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his immense patience and is as an example for those who would believe in him and receive eternal life. Now to the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the God only be honour and glory for ever and ever. Amen. Paul doesn't take for granted the great generosity of God, God who has saved him, God who has given him new life. Even though he has persecuted God's people in the past, even years later, Paul hasn't become complacent. He still appreciates the magnitude, the great wonder of what God has done for him. It's easy for us as Christians to become complacent in our relationship with Jesus, especially if we've been his followers for some years. We take for granted our ability to talk to him in prayer. We begin to take for granted the fact that the awesome, all-powerful creator of the universe cares about us so much that he died to set us free. Like being able to jump in the car and get a ride to school or having the latest gadgets and technology. It's something that begins to seem normal. So maybe we stop being thankful. But it's a pretty big deal, isn't it? The love that God has showered upon us. It's certainly not something we should take for granted. And in case you missed it, God does love you. He has sent Jesus to die for you, no matter what you have done. Paul persecuted God's people and was still saved. In his own words, Paul was the worst. And even if you feel like that, if you feel like you are the worst, you're not. But even if you feel like that, this gift is still for you. So what then is our response? Like Paul, who says, now to the king, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God be honour and glory forever and ever. Our response, rather than complacency, rather than taking things for granted should be gratefulness, thankfulness and praise of the king for he has been good to us.